I set out on a narrow way many years ago, hoping I would find true love along the broken road. Hi, it's me. And if you can't tell, it's extremely bright and extremely sunny here today. 64 degrees. We've had the weirdest weather the last couple of weeks. Um, I think it knows, that one is down just a tad, that when I want to get out and do something, it's foggy, cold, and rainy. And when I don't have a thing to do, it's bright, sunshiny, and glorious. You know. But I fooled it today because, you know, I don't know why I look this way every time I come. Because this is a dead end street. Uh, I, I guess it's a good driving habit. Um, yeah, you can tell the sun. You probably, this is probably better looking than actually seeing me anyway. Um, I'm going over to Fleet Feet to see if I can get a good pair of walking shoes. And I've been thinking about the name ever since I was told about it. Oh, my mirror is like looking at the ceiling of my car. This not going to be much good, is it? Um, I don't strike me as a strange name. Fleet Feet. It's like a whole bunch of people in the, I, I don't know. I just think it's a weird name for a shoe store. You know, expect it to have something sports, walking, walking, running feet. Uh, never had a pair of shoes that were personally fit for me. Well, I guess when I was a kid. I think when you're a kid, most kids have to have them, don't they? I don't know. That's, that was old. Hi. Yes, I know I'm in the sun. Um, I know my son, who will be 40 next year, um, we had to take him and get, you know, his special shoes fitted for him and everything. So it helped him walking, learning to walk. And um, he also had sea feet. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. A lot of, yeah, actually his son, one of his sons had the same thing. My son was put in, you know, those little white baby shoes, the hard sole ones. Um, he wore those, but they had a brace between them uh, so that he couldn't uh, turn his feet. He had to keep his feet straight to... I, I take that back. First, he was in cast. They put cast on his feet. And everybody, oh Lord, that was so annoying. Everybody who saw him was like, oh. What, what did he, I'm sorry, I'm looking to see if I can go. Uh, oh, what did he do? And about the 57th time somebody asked me that, I said he broke his leg skiing. And he was like, not even a year old. So, or right around a year old. He just asked the, you know, what do you, he fell down the steps. Yeah, I'm not going to tell you I'm a bad mother. Now I'm looking over here. Because when this clears, this starts. They're not synchronized. Um, but anyway, so we were cast, eh, three or four months maybe. Actually, this is disgusting, and he thinks it's disgusting, but I thought, you know, I'm one of those mothers that keeps everything. So, I actually kept one of the casts off of his legs, and he's like, it's got cooties or something. He's like, oh my god, I can't believe he did that. I thought it was kind of cute. Yeah, big cast. Um, then they put him in the hard bottom white shoes with the braces on them. And all that went on, it was about a year or a little bit longer. Um, so when he told me his son had it, I thought, oh, is he gonna have to, you know, better? And he's like, no, the doctor says he'll grow out of it. And I mean, you know, okay, I guess. Why didn't they tell us back then? Um, so. I don't know. I guess it's not that big a deal. When you start wearing shoes, the shoes won't let your feet do this, so they just naturally have to do that. But I remember it cost us a good fortune to 
because the I know the, the cast was covered by our insurance, but I don't think the shoes and the braces and stuff were. Um, and it was kind of pricey. What was those? What were those little baby? What are those baby? Not mother goose though. Stride right. That's what it was. They were stride right. They were pricey. Um. Anyway, talking about food. Oh. Uh. Something. Oh, I see. People go into the post office. The the, the line is so backed up. I am two blocks from the post office. It's only one lane going the only direction. That um you can't move. That's how bad the post office is right at this moment. Um, speaking of which, I don't know if y'all have went into this or not. We've been talking about it a little bit um, online, some of the groups there. Uh, the post office is going crazy this year. We have had a uh, pickup, a door, you know, door to door. They picked up our mail for well over two years uh, from our door instead of saving us having to go to the post office. We've had a couple of problems, but they, uh, they know us and uh, we're good to our male people. Never been nasty to the uh, supervisor over the carriers. Max actually, he gave Max his, his personal cell phone number. Um, to call in case um, we saw him missed a pickup, and he has actually come out a couple of times himself and picked up our mail and uh, got it uh, out that same day, so we wouldn't get uh, the light must be broke or something. These people just aren't going anywhere. Um, So we wouldn't get the ding on uh, eBay. This year, I, it is just bizarre. Um, and I thought it was just going to be us. Our mailman two weeks ago um, hurt himself and is going to be out <laughs> till like the new year. Yay! So we've been having like subs every day and um, because he's, he's coming back to work, so they're not going to give his job to somebody. Just run the light. Doesn't matter. Just run it. Um, so, we've had, like, different people every day. And this last week, it just went bananas. Hi, sun again. Um, they... Or like Max called him at six o'clock one night and said, you know, our mail hasn't been picked up. Has, you know, what is he problem? And the supervisor said, no, he's actually not coming from the route yet. Uh, call me back at 7.30. Uh, or, you know, and he, he's, he's, I'll be looking for him. And also, uh, if I forget or whatever, call me back at 7.30. And if he hasn't picked him up yet, you know, let me know and I'll come get him. 7.30 at night? Um, so this has kind of been the norm, um, and I, like I said, I've been reading on Facebook some other eBay people and stuff, and the post office just in the last few days authorized carriers to start delivering at 5.30 in the morning, and uh, they're going to be delivering up until 8.30 at night. Um, which, I don't know the rules and stuff. Max says there's some kind of rule that they're not supposed to deliver after 7. But, you know, I just want my stuff done. I actually went in yesterday. I hated to do it uh, because it's going to affect my top rate of solar status. But I went in yesterday and bought all my stuff on two-day um, shipment. I had to. Uh, it was either get a ding every day or just get the top rated solar status, you know, bopped out of my thing, which I'd rather get that. And then after Christmas, I can just go back and put one day 
Um, but yeah, we, um, one night, this guy shows up, it's about 7.30, and we have a long driveway, and we have a really big tup, uh, Tupper made, <laughs> Tupper, well, rubber made bin that we put all our outgoing mail in, and it has written on top, these huge letters, outgoing mail. If we don't have anything on the inside, we put no outgoing mail today, which is rare, and, but we put it at the bottom of our steps because we have 15 steps coming up to our house. And we try to save them as much work as possible. If Max is home, he uh, will actually go out, you know, go down to the steps and meet the person and greet them and say, you know, thank you and whatever, blah, 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 blah. Um, and we've always been very good to our characters, characters, <laughs> carriers, as far as Christmas and, you know, summer and that kind of thing, uh, making sure they're taken care of. Uh, so, somebody's gonna get killed. She's running, she's running, she might make it. Um, so, but anyway, Max went down the other night, the guy who's waiting at like at 7.30, and you know, he greeted him and he said, oh, we're running late tonight, and he said, yeah. He said, I finished my route in Cave Springs, which is a suburb 30 miles from anywhere near us. And he said, when I came in, they immediately told me to come over and get this route and start delivering it. So this poor guy knows nothing about this area. Of the city. I mean, he may just know from whatever, but uh, knows nothing in the city, has never run this route before, and they sent him to the uh, you know post office and say, here, take all these and make deliveries. So, and, and I, yeah, I read somebody also on Facebook who said that she could tell the, the guy who was bringing the stuff out um, was just like going in circles. You know, he had no idea where he was, you know, where what was what. And, and plus, I mean, we're, we're at the end of a dead end street and there are no street lights out where we live. Now our house, we can light it up like, you know, an airplane landing field. And if they haven't brought the mail yet, we do. We flick on all our lights, so it's easily seen. But if uh, other people, you know, don't, they can't see the numbers and stuff. Um, how many people now put their number on their mailbox or a name or anything like that? I'm surprised. Uh, I know people who off top, you know, just general conversation, they said, oh no, I don't want to do that. That'll lead to identity theft and blah, 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 blah. I don't know what the heck that's got to do with anything. I want to get my mail so I can, you know, if they can get, steal my identity from my street number and my name, last name only, they're good. Uh, but yeah, so that's been going on. Max finally, finally got all the eBay screw-ups. He went through literally, bless his heart, um, 600 listings, one by one, and made sure they were all accurate, uh, all had the right uh, best offer, no best offer, you know, free shipping, not free shipping. The pictures were all there, blah, 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 blah. It took him over a week to do it. And then kind of screwed me up because I really wanted to have a Black Friday sale and I wasn't going to do it knowing stuff was screwed up on the uh, store. So finished it and yesterday I went in and anything that's been listed over a year uh, I marked it down 50% and anything that's been listed over six months I marked it down 25%. And we had six sales that were buying. Yay! So, maybe, maybe we're going to get this, um, you know, straightened out and going. Of course, now we got all the post office stuff going on. But, uh, yeah, all sales are appreciated. And I admit, uh, I have been, I, I, you know me, I had list at least one thing every day, but I could, you know, be listing more. It's my fault. Um, I choose to do that so that I also can kind of enjoy uh, things. Uh, 
like going today. I'm not, I don't feel like I have to stay home and do. I mean, I could have done a ton of stuff today at home, but I want to get out here and get these shoes. I've already put it off for, since Thanksgiving. I haven't been able to get out here. I actually had a doctor's appointment today and they called and canceled. I was so happy. Um, tomorrow's bridge. Wednesday, I have a doctor's appointment. You see my social schedule. Thursday, I have a doctor's appointment. Yes. And Friday, I think it's free. So, I'll worry about uh, getting some stuff ready to go on Friday. Uh, and I don't think we have anything planned for Saturday or Sunday. So, I'll worry about it then. Um, get some more book sets ready. Um, I don't, I just... I kind of, um, I was talking to, uh, Rhonda from Got Junk in Her Trunk, and she was talking about going out and thrifting this fabulous place, and I told her, I said, I just, and it's kind of, she was talking about the place, but I'm talking about my house, I feel like I'm one of those vacuum cleaners that, when you run into something, you just turn around, and you run into something else, and you turn around, and you run into something else, I just get overcome with everything I've got that I could list as to you know, what should I list next? Um, I'm kind of that way. Um, do you, well, you probably don't. If you're not friends with me on Facebook, you don't know, but the uh, grand babies came over Saturday. My son brought them over. And they don't come to our house. They're always welcome, but they don't come because we have an eBay house. And they would think they'd die and gone to heaven if we just let them loose, you know? Fine, fine. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Uh, so Max and I frantically were shoving things in rooms and shutting doors and vacuuming and inspecting the floor to make sure, you know, a button or something hadn't fallen and one of them going to choke on it. And I mean, it was just like, I told, you know, we did more work that like two hours than we had done in three months. Uh, but <laughs> it's funny now. It looks halfway clean, but you don't want to open a door. You know, it's like, I don't know if you're old, you know, the old uh, dogwood, dagwood, dagwood, body, anywhere, where they, you know, you open the door and do this because everything's going to fall. Um, uh, oh, love my new phone. Oh, love my new phone. <sighs> I'm just so spoiled by it now. Uh, I took my first pictures with it yesterday. Um, fabulous. I, for some reason, I thought somebody had said the X didn't take as good a pictures as the, like the six, seven, eight, whatever. But uh, it, it, I thought they were great. They really were. Um, so, yeah, I got three things that are ready to go. If Max packs them, we get the weights and stuff. Um, they're ready to go. Um, what else am I going to do today? I don't know. I'm kind of, I've been spending, on, I, I, I just, I, I've been in a Christmassy mood. I don't know what I did. I literally have not cooked in 15 years. And I'm not lying. I've not cooked in 15 years. Max does all the cooking. Um, and I don't know what got me in the mood. A nostalgia, melancholy, I don't know what, but, um, my Aunt Ruth, my father's family, my father was the baby of the family, and he was the last one to pass away of the kids and stuff, and he passed away in 87. But um, his brother, uh, my Uncle John, married uh, Ruth, and so my Aunt Ruth, sweetest, kindest, most fabulous woman, southern charm, southern belle to the hilt. I mean, she just was always dressed, I mean, not fancy fancy, but she always was dressed so nice, and she knew just what to say, or what, you know, I, I mean, just, it just, I envied her so much with me with the foot and the mouth disease. Um, about to get on the interstate, but she always, every Christmas, just get right in there in front of me, go ahead, I don't care. I need a new car. Now he's made me block the lane, and I never do that. I hate people who do that. And I'm so sorry to that person over there that blocked the lane. But I, it, well, I started to say a nasty word. I shouldn't do that. Um, she made um, 
candied or sugared pecans every Christmas. And we would go and fresh out of the oven, they were still warm. Oh my God. They were so good. So I got it in my head that I was gonna make some. So I go to the grocery store and I buy everything I need. And then it came time to make them. I was going to make them on Saturday. And I just didn't want to make them. And uh, Max and I have a problem in being in the kitchen at the same time because whatever I do in the kitchen is wrong and whatever he does is right. So I kind of wanted to say, would you help me with these? But then I knew where that would lead. So I haven't made them yet. I still may. I just got to get in the right mood. They're not hard at all. Um, I just, I don't know. And then, for some strange reason, uh, the first thing I ever learned to cook was in home ec class back in the Stone Age. And they taught us to make cheese straws. And I don't know if y'all know what cheese straws are or not, but they're these little cheese wafers and they're like wavy. And you used to push them out like out of a cookie press and they're about, I don't know, two, three inches long, depending on how long you want them. And they have just a touch, sharp cheddar cheese and a touch, just a touch of cayenne. So they got a little, mm. So I was craving some of those. And I bought all the stuff to make them. I don't know what, I may have must have fallen and hit my head that day or something, because even Max was like, you're gonna do what? Uh, but I don't have a cookie press at all, don't own one. Which I, I probably can ask my bridge people, and I'm sure one of them has one, because they're uh, about 10, 15 years older than me. So they're in their mid 70s, late 70s. And they entertain and do a lot, they'll talk about, you know, still they're making stuff. So I'm sure one of them probably, and they let me borrow it. But then I was reading um, Trisha Yearwood's recipe for them. And she said, if you don't have a cookie press, um, just roll them into a ball, get in on the interstate now, and flatten them out with a fork. Oh, oh well, okay, I can do that. So, uh, I had uh, said, sh showed that to Max, and he was like, well, no, I'm not going to do that. You have to have the piggy press. I'm like, what's the difference? It tastes the same. And he's like, well, no, they won't be cheese straws unless you have the piggy press. I know, son. Enjoy it. Uh, so, I kind of just backed off on that a little bit too because uh, y'all we don't eat pine. we eat cashews a lot uh pines they usually don't buy them because they're expensive let's pay uh 22 dollars for those pecans i'm not gonna let them go to waste uh and i probably will wind up making them maybe you know next weekend I'll take some to bridge and I'll take some to my son's house and you know I don't know wherever else we go. Max may take some to the VA for you know, volunteer people over there and stuff. But um Nobody sees our house. No 
nobody comes to our house. Right? Like I said, we always go to my son's, and there's nobody else that comes, so it's kind of like, I did buy some, uh, we've had these for, like, starting three years ago. If you have a Kroger in your area, I'll roll the wind up a little so you can hear better. Yeah, probably. Uh, if you have a Kroger in your area, oh, i got to get out of this. This is the only, oh, my feet get out. There's somebody over there. Get out of my way. Shoot, shoot. I'm used to getting off here because this is where I usually get off, but I've got to go down farther uh, than I usually go to get these shoes because they're way down here with my booties. Um, what was I saying? Oh, anyway, I don't remember. We go to my son, so uh, it's not a big deal, but yeah, I kind of would like to have a little bit of, oh, the Kroger things, that's what I was talking about. Yeah, they have these terracotta, they do it for Halloween. They do uh, pumpkins, all different sizes and shapes and stuff. And I've got those, and we put those out on our steps. And then for Christmas, they do uh, snowmen and penguins and Santa. And this year, they had a polar bear. So um, we put those, like, out on the steps. And actually, we have one, like, up on the deck between the two chairs we keep up on the deck too okay now i gotta look for this place fleet feet fleet feet it said it's right in front of lowe's which is coming up but yeah that's the only decorating we've got out right now um i see lowe's oh wait a minute is that it i'm blind as a bat even with my glasses yeah i think i see it yeah, there it is. Okay, y'all. Cross your fingers that I can get some good shoes. Oh, you got some mail to it. Funny. Uh, I feel funny going in a sporting goods store. I'm about as sporting as I don't know what. Okay, here we turn. That's free estimate. Something a damn. The shoe's gonna be. Oh, that's another dirty word. The damn's gonna. The, now I can't stop saying it. The shoe's gonna be that expensive, but it was at Lowe's. Do your feet hurt? I'm at the right place. Actually, it's my back and my feet when I do it. But anyway. Okay, that was the fascinating drive to the store. And, uh, so got my shoes. Just so long as it was a war shoes because I live in Crocs. Uh, I hope they work out. Uh, I got a pair of Brooks and I got an insert and I got uh, four pair of socks because I'm sure they tell you this just to get you to buy the thing but um, it said that uh, you have to wear synthetic socks not cotton which everything I've ever heard is always cotton, cotton, cotton. We're cotton underwear. We're cotton socks. We're cotton. So, but, uh, I don't know. Something about, uh, uh, the synthetic will hold just your the cotton will let your feet sweat or something and then they'll get, uh, like, not an athlete's foot, but you know what I mean. My son actually used to get them, have those grungy feet because he, um, oh, God bless America. Sorry. So they get for trying to adjust things I don't know anything about. Um, because he did so much hiking and backpacking and all that stuff, his feet were, oh, they was messed up. Um, I have no idea if he wore cotton socks or not. I never, I guess I, this is new to me. <laughs> I know they kept, had the absolutely most gorgeous, listen, I'm old, but I ain't dead. Gorgeous young man. I'd say 20s, waited on me. I mean, I mean, whoa. Um, name was Alex. And 
course, I had to try on 15 pairs of shoes just so I could keep rubbing my feet and putting insoles and socks on and stuff. I'm a dirty old woman. Um, but, you know, you stand, it's one of those places where you stand on the machine thing, and they do the 3D view of your foot, and they tell you. I always thought one of my feet was a half size bigger than the other, but he says, no, what it actually is, is one of my feet is a B width, and one of my feet is a C width. I can't be normal. So, uh, they uh, made a insole to make the shoes more comfortable for me, and uh, then of course I got my synthetic socks, so, uh, but it was the, the socks go to an organization here in town called, oh lord, something, girls run, run for the girls, I don't know, it's a charity group, but, um, they get uh, young girls in foster care and kids who are in trouble and they get them out and they take them out and hiking and kind of outdoors if you want to run, if you want to just hike, whatever you want to do and the money from the socks goes to that so I'm fine with that. Uh, the other thing, uh, I've got of course 97 pair of white socks don't we all that we wear with our sneakers. I got, I didn't think about it at the time, but um, three of them are weird colors, so I won't have any problem with those, but I got one white pair, and it says absolutely do not dry these socks because it will take the um, cushion, I don't know, the cushion, not the cushion, the, I don't know, something don't, don't dry. Don't put dryer sheets anywhere near them. Oh, somebody's got their Christmas tree. Isn't that sweet? Um, so, yeah, the others will be easy to notice because they're weird colors. Uh, but I wouldn't think when I got the white pair, I should have just got another weird color bear so I'd notice them when I'm doing the laundry. Oh, well. Uh, then I went over to the Goodwill, which is right across the street, actually. God. Our Goodwills here, I mean, I I don't even, well, I don't need to really go anymore, but I thought, oh, it's across the street, let me go, I may find the greatest thing on earth. Um, I don't know what they're doing. Uh, they're, they closed a whole bunch of them, and then they're downsizing the ones that are leaving open, but what I mean by downsizing is... The building stays the same size, but then they will put up a, um, like a wall. Oh, sun. Sorry. Didn't see that just now. Whee! Um, people think I'm weird for the ride by the door. Why is she waving at her windshield? Um, I'm, I'm getting off in a second, so it'll stop. But, uh, oh yeah, I was saying they're putting up wall, and I'm like, what's behind the wall? You know, I mean, what are y'all doing? I mean, they have a huge donation center here that I thought all the donations went to. It's also a bin, you know, like if you go to the bins. It's a big building, and I thought all the donations basically went there and then were divided up into where um, they were going to wind up going. So, I'm confused why they're putting these walls up uh, and, like, closing off half the store. I don't know, it's bizarre, but, yeah, basically the only thing, um, they had one thing, one uh, shelf full of, you know, a set of shelves of toys. They had a set of shelves of kitchen stuff. They had like 10 linen hangers hanging on the wall with all kinds of crap on it. Um, they had some books, which the one, they even cut out the books completely in some of the ones that I've been out. Um, and shoes, 
everywhere, but they don't do their shoes like you expect shoes. Their shoes, they have like their clothing racks, have like a little basket thing on top of them, and they set the shoes up on top in that. So you literally have to go to every single clothing rack to look at all the shoes because they're divided everywhere. I'm sorry, y'all. Uh, I'm about to get off and I'll go away. Uh, I, I found one shirt for me, found another. I looked at it, looked at it. I love the colors, but I could tell it was going to pain the butt to wash. So I said, no, I don't need another pain in the butt to wash shirt. I've got a bunch of them already, and I wear them once, and then I have a laundry basket down in the laundry that, uh, if it has to be washed delicately or hand or something like that, it goes in that basket, and that basket stays there until it's overflowing, and then I take a day and do all those. So I thought, huh, oh, it was a really pretty shirt, but I don't need another one of them. I need to stop buying them. I don't buy them new, and I know better. I, but if I see something at Goodwill, and it's, you know, the Goodwill shirts are $3.79, um, I have picked up some that I really like that fall into that category. Uh, I was going to go to either Kohl's or there's a Walmart over there too, but it's already 4.30 and um, I just want to go and I didn't have lunch so I'm just going to go stop my home, get me something for lunch and uh, I guess a, I don't know, it's Leonard. Max and I got like Leonard a combination of lunch and dinner. And then go home before it starts getting really dark. Uh, Max will be at the VA all night. Not all night. Until about 8.30 tonight. So, just me and Daisy. We can watch what we want on the TV. Uh, I've been trying to watch some Christmas stuff. But Max is, he's not, well, he's not anti-Christmas. But he's anti-Christmas movies. Uh, there's like three that were ever made that he likes. And he will give any others a chance. I'm not, I have watched some of the Hallmark ones, but I admit they're really hokey. Uh, you know, Girl Meets Boy, there's some obstacle in her path to true love, and it goes away, and then he's filthy rich, and they wind up getting together, and, you know, single mother with four kids is now set for life, or I don't know. It, it's just like different actors, not even that sometimes. Um, uh, different, uh, you know, vague, very vague, different things. I love to watch the cooking shows. That's probably what got me into thinking I could bake the cones and cheese straws. Um, I've been watching the gingerbread competition and the cookie competition and the cake competition and the, you know, all the Christmas ones. I love those. Um, Max doesn't like those either, so he doesn't watch those with me. Um, I watched, I thought the movie was good. I talked Max into watch it called uh, The Miracle Man. And it was, had a Chris, it had, it was Christmas set, kind of, but it wasn't like just overflowing with, you know, Christmas, Christmas. Um, I don't remember. It's been made in the last 20 years. It's not old or anything, but. I thought it was a very good movie. If you've got, I got, we watched it on Prime. So, if you have Prime, look it up. I, I thought it was a good movie. Um, no, you know, no uh, cussing, screaming, fighting um, kind of thing. Uh, but yeah, it was called The Miracle Man. I really liked it, and I don't, I don't know who was in it. I don't think it was any big name stars or anything, but uh, yeah, it was good. Um, and my favorite Christmas movie ever, and I'm not going to watch it this year because I watched it last year, and I'm kind of funny. I don't like to rewatch movies, you know, too soon after his elf. But God, I love that movie. And I hate Will Ferrell, which is strange. I can't stand anything he's done. I don't like him as a comedian. And. I don't remember who talked me into seeing that movie, but I fought tooth and nail. I did not want to see it, and they said, you know, you really need to see it. 
and now it literally is my favorite Christmas movie. I love that movie. It's hysterical. Um, and I'm one of those that I hate to say, but I hate It's a Wonderful Life. I really do. I am, you know, just not into it. Um, there are some other old Christmas movies that I like. And Holiday Inn, I've had, you know, it's, we watched it every year growing up. I'm tired of that one. Um, I don't know. Anyway, I'm not going to stop it. i got to figure out where I'm going to get some food from. Uh, do I want McDonald's? That's usually my go-to. I've had her one piece. I eat a lot of fast food, which I shouldn't. I think I told you this already. When I get a hamburger, I take the bun off and just eat the meat. It's strange, but... Low carb. Um, and it'll be... No. Well, Miss Daisy gets fed at 5 and it's 4.30 now, so... Miss Daisy loves french fries. You come in the door with the McDonald's bag, she knows that you don't have fries in it. She loves her some french fries. Oh, and Coles. Yeah, you know, I've only been in Coles once. I hear a lot of people talk about it. Coles, Coles, Coles. I just, I'm not a new store shopper. You know, I mean, not, but you know, I mean, oh, oh, it's Santa, but he's, he's a statue. I thought it was a real Santa standing out in the middle of nowhere. He's a statue. I need help. Um... I don't even remember what Max and I, Max and I were looking for something in particular and we couldn't find it anywhere and we went over to that one and we still didn't find it there either. No, wait a minute, we did find something. I remember because we checked out and I had the guy, it's like, oh, you've never been to Kohl's. Oh, here, let me give you this 20% off coupon you can use today and blah, blah, blah. But I never went back. Um, and uh, Walmart over there, been to maybe three times. It's way on the other side of town and I've got one really close to me that's really nice and then got another one that's pretty close to me. So I go all the way across town by that one. Um, what else is going on? Not much. I looked at the jewelry but it's that Chinese stuff they're bringing in and it's just you know I guess it's all going to uh, shock goodwill you know, buy your jewelry from there I don't need to be buying any more period uh, of course I, I bought some for me personally <laughs> I have a problem I need to run J.A. Jewelry Anonymous Somebody, somebody, everybody like died. It's sad to see one sort of something with people. This one's real popular. There's a lot of cars. So I get this is just visitation. They wouldn't be doing the funeral this late at night. Um, this is kind of like a main drag through Denton, the town next to us. Pizza place over here. The best pizza. Oh my god, that guy got pizza. But Max and I had one of those. Sunday night. He had to run to the grocery store and I called him and ordered the pizza and he ran to the grocery store and then ran back at the pizza. I mean, it's really good. Really good. And then there's a Burger King and a Bill Dangles and a Kentucky Fried Chicken and a Long John Silver's and a McDonald's and you get the idea. And there's a Kroger and there's a little strip mall that's at the Kroger. And there's about 50 things in it. But anyway... Well, thank you for staying with me while I rambled today to keep me from being lonely. I shall get my fast food and go home, and Daisy and I shall find something to watch on the TV tonight. And I hope you're having good weather wherever you're at. Still nice. I don't know what the, I think it's dropped into the, maybe the high 50s, but it's still very nice out. Um, and. Always remember, don't get so busy making a living that you forget to stop with the red light. No, 
that you forget to make a life. And I'll see y'all guys in two or three days. Bye. That's the broken road that led me straight to you.